This lesson deals with an inductance example using piecewise. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 6 starting on page 15. Suppose that we put a current source in parallel with a 2 millihenry inductance, and that this current source is a sinusoid. It has an amplitude of 2 and a frequency of 1000 radians per second. Now if we pull a 2 pi out of here, then we'll get the frequency in hertz, and that turns out to be 159.15. Let's find and plot the voltage across the power absorbed and the energy absorbed by this inductance. Previously in the chapter, we had a formula for the voltage across an inductance at any instant in time, and it's L di dt. So L is 2 millihenry, and we're going to differentiate 2 sine of 1000 t. Now the derivative of sine is cosine of the same frequency, and then we're going to take the derivative of what's inside these brackets here, and that's just going to be 1000. We've got the 2 millihenry, it's got an amplitude of 2 amps, the 1000 from our chain rule derivative, and then the cosine of 1000t. And multiply all that out, you get 4 times the cosine of 1000t. Now power is voltage times current, so we could take this voltage we just found and multiply it by the current through the inductance, and we get the result, which would be a product of a sine and cosine. If you recall from trig, a sine of alpha times the cosine of alpha is one half the sine of twice alpha. In the previous case here, we've got 8 times sine and cosine multiplied, but now we'll have one half sine of twice the argument, which would be 2000 T. So I have four sine of 2 kT watts. The energy absorbed by the inductance is one half Li squared, so one half times two millihenries times the sine of 1000 T, the amplitude of two, and then squared. And that gives me four sine squared of one kT millijoules. In the SPICE program, there is a command for doing a sine wave. The terms that we need to capture or get are the average value, the peak value, and the frequency in hertz. Okay, so in our case here, we've got an average value of zero. In other words, we're above zero as much as we are below zero. Amplitude of two, so it goes up plus two and then down to minus two, and the frequency of 159.15 hertz. Remember from our earlier discussion about current sources is that the first node is the tail of the arrow, and the second node is the tip of the arrow. That's because we're treating this as a element, absorbing power. So the plus sign is here and the minus sign would be here if that current source is absorbing power. And in most cases it's not, but that's the notation in SPICE. And then our inductance was between nodes 1 and 0. Inductance begins with the letter L and has a value of 2 millihenries. It would be 2M. Okay, I'm going to pick the ending time for our simulation. Now one period is 1 over the frequency in hertz, and that would be about 6.28 milliseconds. So let's go a little farther out, maybe round it up to 10 milliseconds. Now let's divide this by at least 200. This is called the print step. It will give me the minimum number of points on the screen. But I'm going to actually do it by a factor of 10 more. Do 2,000. So I can increase my accuracy. I'm going to do some integration again in Pro. I'm going to run that file. And now let's take a look at some of the quantities we were just calculating. I always like to check that my source is what I think it is. And so I'm just going to ask for the current of the current source. And show me here that I've got a sine wave with the amplitude of two, and it goes up to plus two and then minus two amps. And then if we take one period here, it's equal to 6.283 milliseconds. And again, that's what we just calculated. Let's ask for the voltage at node one. You can see that it's a cosine function with an amplitude of four, again, going from between plus four and minus four. So that checks with our calculation. Let's plot the voltage across and the current through the inductance. So node voltage one, times the current of the current source. Notice here, I've got twice as many cycles here as I had before. So in other words, here's one period, here's two periods, and that second period is at about 6.28 milliseconds. So we've actually doubled the frequency, and that's exactly what we had calculated. You can see here that the power absorbed is positive, and the power absorbed is negative. Let's see if we're storing energy. So let's plot the integral of the voltage across the inductance times the current through it. You can see the frequency I have here is the same as the power. I calculate that shortly. Here, notice that the value is always positive, so we're always absorbing energy. Obviously, here we're building it up, increasing it, and here we're decreasing it. So we're giving up everything that we stored, doing it again, and doing it again. We had a value for the power absorbed as 4 milli sine squared of 1000 T. This again is one of our trig identities, and that the sine squared of alpha is 1 half times the quantity 1 minus the cosine of 2 alpha. So I'd have a 1 half times this 4 milli, we 2 milli, and then 1 minus the cosine of 2000 t. Again, this has twice the frequency of our original waveform, so that agrees. 
And then take a look at the cosine function here. Right? When t is equal to zero, the cosine is equal to one, so I get zero. And then the cosine can eventually equal minus one. That would give us two here, so we get a maximum of four millijoules. This checks with our, with our calculations, uh, this graph of voltage, current, power, and energy. Maybe draw some conclusions from these graphs in terms of our definitions. Inductance can simply store its absorbed energy and eventually can return it. There is no energy dissipated in an ideal inductance, and so the coil would remain cool to the touch. When inductance is absorbing power, the current enters the plus terminal with our passive sign convention, but when it's generating power, the current cannot change instantaneously, so the voltage would have to flip polarity. Indeed does that. We're going to use this in switch mode power supplies to actually increase our voltage greater than the battery that we're hooking up into our circuit. Like a capacitance, you cannot take out more energy than you store it. This is an inductance example using the PSPICE program to illustrate some of its properties.